morning, North Beach kids. How are you? Teacher Tony here. Hey, I am here to tell you guys another amazing story. A legend, folklore, myth, and campfire story. I hope you guys enjoyed the first couple of ones. What was it? Let's see, mermaids, Bigfoot. So amazing, right? You guys, did you guys have fun listening to those? Well, the cool thing about legends, folklore, myths, and campfire stories is that they were just passed down from generation to generation. And like I said earlier, generation to generation means somebody's grandma was told a story from her grandma, was told a story from her grandma or her grandpa, and was told a story for them. So this happened a long time ago. No, no, no. Not just a long time ago. A long, long, long time ago. And as every folklore, myth, campfire story, legend starts. We we're going to show this slide here because I want you guys to understand that storytelling happens from, from today, from all the way to the cavemen. So today we have mommies and daddies. They read us stories at, at bedtime, right? And then at school, we have teachers like Teacher China, Teacher Haley, and Teacher Ellen telling us stories about cool things, magical things, might be true, might be not so true, but they're fun. So, like all legends, myths, folklore, and campfire stories, they started around, you're right, you guys, a campfire. So all the way back to the cavemen, they would talk about their exploits, their tales, and sometimes those tales became bigger and bigger and bigger, and they became legends and myths and folklore. Are you guys ready to hear the next story? You're gonna love it. Are you sure? Okay, get ready. Dragons! Ho 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 ho! Legends of knights, princesses, and dragons. Dragons, are they real or are they make-believe? You guys are going to be the judge. I'm going to tell you some tall tales, some amazing legends, some really cool stories. So, we talked about the cavemen. Because cavemen were kind of like the first people, right, that roamed the earth. Before cavemen, there were dinosaurs and insects. And we've gone over all that. But the cavemen. They didn't have words like we had, right? They didn't write the ABCs. They didn't have an alphabet. They didn't, you know, have typewriters, and they definitely didn't have computers. But what they did was they wrote on the walls inside caves. Now, scientists have found a lot of these caves with cool pictures on them, and they told stories, and they were called hieroglyphics. Now, how this legend starts is because of the cavemen. And in their caves, there were pictures or cave paintings of something that was big, gigantic, magical, mystical, and a little bit scary. You guys see the pictures on the right there? I think they were talking about dragons. So... Back in the medieval times, that was a long, 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 long time ago. There, all everybody in the castle would meet, and they would tell stories. Some fun stories, some scary stories, some for real stories, some maybe made up a little bit. But the castle is where all the people from the land, all the people from the neighboring farms and villages, they would come and they would listen to stories. And that is where the legend of the dragons began. So this guy right here, he's a court jester. Matter of fact, he's kind of a clown. But really, he's so funny. And his job at court in the palace was to make people laugh. He would also sing songs. He would juggle, or she would juggle. And always wore really colorful, funny, funny outfits. And their job 
was to tell stories. Sometimes they st told stories through song. And all the people of the castle would gather around and listen to the jester. And he would tell some amazing stories, usually about knights fighting battles and, and, and princesses being beautiful and all incredible stories throughout the land. But there was one story that everybody at the castle, everybody in the kingdom would drop, stop what they're doing and listen because it was the most magical, magnificent story that turned into a legend. The legend goes that there were beasts, large beasts that flew in the air. And these weren't just regular beasts. They were scary. They had big old teeth. They had horns. They had talons. They were bigger than a horse. As a matter of fact, they were bigger than 10 horses. And they can be seen in the sky. And so the court jester would tell all the people in the palace stories of how these flying beasts would terrorize the neighborhoods, the villages, and the countryside. And they had big teeth, bigger than your arm. And they had ferocious horns, longer than your leg. Look at the bottom there, you guys. That. Those are teeth. Now, you guys having big old heads and being really, really smart, if an animal or a creature has teeth that are sharp like that, what are they? You think they're herbivores or carnivores? Oh, man, you guys are so smart. Of course they're carnivores. Look at those teeth. Not only did they have teeth, if that wasn't enough to be afraid of these dragons, they breathe fire. Oh my goodness. So you're telling me they can fly. They've got large talons and they've got sharp, sharp arm length teeth. But then on top of all that, they can fly. That is definitely something that is pretty spectacular. So, they would tell the story about the dragon and they would teach everybody in the villages, in the towns, throughout the whole kingdom, the dragon anatomy. And it had a big old head and a big old eye, actually two big old eyes that can see for miles and miles and miles. And it had big horns. And the creepy thing about this thing it had wings, huge bat-like wings that were bigger, longer, and could fly so high that everybody had to always look up when they were doing their chores, when they're going about their farming duties, when they're collecting eggs, when they're collecting potatoes, when they're doing Everything that they did during the day, they always had to keep a weary eye out. Because look at those feet and the claws and the talons. And don't even get me started again on the teeth. So back to the kingdom, back to the palace, back to the royal family. Everything was going great. Everybody was having fun. The king and the queen, that's them up top there. They were having fun. The heralds, those are the guys with little horns. They would announce the arrival of the king and queen. And all the, all the people from the villages, the surrounding villages and the kingdom, they would come and they were having a big old party. And that's the jester right there. He's the guy in the in the green and yellow and red and he's juggling balls and he kept everybody ha laughing and he's kind of like a clown today we see clowns making people laugh well the jester that was his job not only was it a clown he's a storyteller a singer and he would tell he he would tell all the people the coolest 
most magnificent magical stories from the kingdom. And of course, you can't have a castle without knights. So there are knights, there are jousters, and there are all the cool people from the kingdom came to court. Oh, you're right. Sorry, I forgot to point out the princess. Of course, there's a princess. Now, everything was growing great in the kingdom. Everybody is happy. Everyone got along. But wait, the story goes that one night, during a big party at the castle, everyone went to sleep. But the next morning, after hearing a horrible screech, they, everybody woke up and the princess was missing. A dragon, they said. A dragon came in the middle of the night and they took the princess. That dragon with his big old teeth, with his big old talons, with his long wings that reach all the way from North Beach Kids all the way to the library. And it's big old horns. And don't even get me started on its breathing fire. So that mean old dragon stole the princess at nighttime. And everybody in the kingdom was very worried. And that, that dragon took the princess and put her in a castle, high, high up in the castle, with no way to get out. And that dragon would not let anyone near. So the king and queen, they decided, they called all the different big, the, the knights of, the, of the, the realm, of the kingdom, all the bravest soldiers, and they gave them a big reward. Whoever saves our daughter, the princess, will have her hand in marriage. So, of course, all the bravest knights from all over the kingdom, they came. And they said, we will get your daughter back for you. We will slay the dragon. And we will marry the princess. And they were very, very brave indeed. Because, as we know, the dragons have big teeth. Huge teeth, long, sharp talons, and can breathe fire. So they were very dangerous. But luckily, there were many brave knights and soldiers that took up the challenge. But little did they know, as a matter of fact, nobody in the kingdom knew that the princess wasn't in trouble. No. The dragon didn't take her in the middle of the night. They were friends. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure you guys ever knew this, but it's a true story that princesses and dragons are bestest friends ever. They get along. They're such good friends that dragons have been known to let princesses carry them. Yeah, not a lot of people know this because it was a secret. Yeah. So they couldn't find the princess anywhere. They would think they saw a dragon and the princess, and they would chase her, but they always disappeared. Because only princesses knew at this time. But little by little, the rest of us, the rest of the kingdom got to know that dragons, they weren't mean. They weren't scary. They weren't these horrendous creatures. They were kind. They were just a little bit misunderstood. Sure, they had big teeth. Sure, they had sharp talons. Sure, they had humongous wings and they were a little bit scary and they breathed fire. But they were kind. And they were the bestest friends to the princesses. Look at these, you guys. Look at all the different dragons. So as... Legend grew and grew and grew. The story of the dragon grew and grew and grew. And at first, like we said, it started off as these big, scary, menacing, big teeth, big horns, sharp claws, breathing fire. But as people in the kingdom, and then us, as time went on, got to know dragons, 
we got to figure out, hey, there's actually some pretty nice dragons out there. They're not, they're not scary. They're not mean. They're not vicious. They, just like Bigfoot and just like the mermaids, they just kind of want to be left alone. They want to live their own lives and not have people being angry at them or throw stones at them or, or just be afraid of them. They had feelings. And if you guys look at the, uh, the picture on the bottom right corner, that's a guy's back. Check that out, you guys. That's a tattoo. A tattoo is when people have um, someone else put ink on them, right? And they put it on their, on their skin, and it stays in the skin. So a lot of people around the world, they think dragons are so cool, so magnificent, so remarkable, that they have a tattoo on their body. So this guy right here in the Japanese culture, the, the dragon is, re, is revealed as one of the most amazing animals or creatures in the world. So pretty cool. And then, of course, that the, the Disney movie with How to Train Your Dragon up, up top there. What was that guy's name again? Gummy or, or Nighthawk? Or... Anyways, really cool movie. So again, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of legends folklore myths and campfire because i actually enjoyed giving it to you guys telling you guys a story because i like telling stories now again i'm not sure if these stories are true if they're make-believe they've been maybe fabricated a little bit but that's the fun part about legends folklore myths and campfire stories they might not be true, they might be true, but they are so much fun. Until next time, you guys, have a great day. The North Beach Kids teachers love you, and we will see you next time. Thank you.